Okay, so you saw in the video where we talked about how smart materials can be used to improve concrete structures. So one of the things that they talked about was the idea of reinforcing concrete with nitinol. And I wanted to mention something a little bit more about nitinol. Uh, nitinol is a shape memory alloy. This is an example of a nitinol sample. It's a nickel titanium alloy. And it has a very unusual property. Normally, when you take a material and you plastically deform it, so I bend a material, right, and I bend it and straighten it out, then what happens is I've actually passed dislocations through that material, or little ripples, that mean that that material is now plastically or permanently deformed in this case. Now, in nitinol, what's weird about it is it doesn't deform that way. It deforms because you're actually passing what we call twins. In other words, it's like you're taking the whole lattice and just zigzagging it. And in doing so, it actually remembers its original structure. So if I take this material, right, it's a nice little spring, right, and I take it and I stretch it out, right, and I make it into something that doesn't look like it's a spring anymore. Well, what I can do now is I've, I actually take this and just gently warm it up. What happens is it's gonna form right back into the spring because it remembers the shape it was in to begin with. And that's the beautiful thing about a shape memory alloy. Now, how would you use that in a concrete? Normally, you wouldn't think of that as a material you'd use in a concrete. However, if you actually embed nitinol into concrete, then when it breaks, if the concrete is under some stress and it actually fractures, you can actually then apply heat to that thing by resistively heating up the nitinol, and it'll actually contract and pull the, the uh, beam back into shape. And so it can actually act as a reinforcement to give you enough time to actually let you get out. And so, um, so people call this a self-healing or repairing um, concrete. Now, there are other, other things that you can add to, um, to a concrete. For example, we talked in the lecture about sensors. And sensors can be added into the concrete. And the idea of a sensor is a material that, um, that you would embed, like a fiber optic sensor, into the material such that it would detect whether or not the, for example, the rebar is corroding. And so, uh, in this case, they actually used the thermal conductivity of the rebar as a way to measure whether or not the rebar is actually undergoing some sort of internal failure through corrosion. And so embedding these sensors is tremendously advantageous. The other thing that they will put into these materials is piezoelectrics. So for example, um, if I take a piezoelectric material, um, that's a material that when you apply, for example, uh, a mechanical force, it will generate electricity or you flip it around in this case, and if you apply electricity to it, it will actually apply a mechanical force or change shape. And so, for example, one of the things they will do is they will put in screws with bolts on them that have piezoelectric materials built into them. And then if they have to, if that nut starts to come off or loosen, they can actually trigger the piezoelectric material to actually expand and take up the slack so that the nut is now tightened again without you physically going in there and tightening the nut. So that's one advantage of a PZT material that you might embed in it. Another thing you can do with PZT materials is use them as sensors so you might pass a, um, a vibration through the concrete and then detect it on the other end to determine whether or not there's a failure inside the concrete. So, other things that they're doing with concrete are primarily changing the additives. So for example, you may add something that will make the concrete either eco green, uh, green concrete. So that's a material that would have, for example, um, the ability to uptake CO2 over an extended period of time and actually try to reduce the CO2 footprint of the concrete. And so it's, uh, it's formulated such that it will, it involves perhaps less CO2 production in its manufacture and actually takes up more CO2 while it's in existence. And so they call it an eco or green concrete. They'll also use fly ash, as I mentioned earlier, which is another additive, all right? And in this case, again, you're trying to use the fact that you've got a whole bunch of aluminosilicates from the uh, leftover after you've burned your coal and you're adding it to the concrete. So there's lots of things going on in concrete. And I think the challenge going forward is going to be to figure out how you can make concrete not only greener, but also stronger so that you can increase the number of possible applications that you'd be using it in the future.